Hello there, we're going to look at um, the types of problems that you sometimes get asked to uh, solve today. Um, and this is for year 12 discrete maths, and, um, which is part obviously of A-level further maths. Um, in particular, I'm not actually interested particularly today at what the solutions are to these problems. What I'm trying to do is classify the types of problems that you may get asked to solve. And in doing that, we're going to split them into four different types. And it says it in the title here. Essentially, we're going to be trying to classify them in terms of one of these four types of um, problems. So existence, construction, enumeration, and optimization. And existence basically asks the questions. It says in front of you now, um, is there a, a solution to a problem that I've asked you? So I might ask you, for instance, what's the height of a uh, the Eiffel Tower? And there clearly is. I could measure that and I could I would know what it is. But if I asked you instead, you know, what happens before the Big Bang in the Big Bang Theory kind of scenario? I don't think I'd, I'd know what the answer is. If there is an answer, does a solution exist? I've no idea. Um, so I'm sure there's like mathematical questions where, for instance, if I was looking at um, only the real numbers and I asked you what, to solve certain quadratics, there are certain answers that there, there's no solution. You know, so um, existence, is there a solution? Construction is about, can you find a method to, f to solve a problem, assuming there is a solution? And we'll come back to that in a bit. So construction is uh, physically, can you, can you find some method to find a solution? Enumeration, kind of a highlight from here, here, it says, or, or it's the start of the word number, I suppose. And we're looking at how many solutions there are. And if yeah, it might be, we want to know, how, you know, just how many we might want to list them all. Optimization is we'd find a maximum, usually, or the minimum um, distance, for instance, between two points A and B. If I've got two points A and B, you know, it might be I go on some weird route to go from one place to the other. I might go straight across. It might be that's the shortest, but this is the quickest. You know, it depends on which way you want to do it. But which one's the best? Um, so cheapest might be the lowest number. Quickest might be the shortest time. Um, the one that visits most friends. Oh, that's now it's the biggest number. So there's a variety of ways to measure um, which one you want. And of course, the question will indicate what you want to do. So we've got these four ideas anyway. We've got existence, we've got construction, enumeration, and optimization. And you need to be able to quote which type of question you're being asked to solve using those four words. So here's an example, I suppose, of us trying to get to the, the, our heads around these four scenarios um, of these four types of questions, rather. And I've got this um, question for you about Jonah wanting to go to a surfing festival hundreds of miles from where he lives. He needs to work an evening shift the day before the festival starts. So that matters in terms of he can't go three weeks in advance and he knows he'll get there in time. So he's got a limited amount of time to get to this fe festival, which may start, say, 10 o'clock the next day or you know, wh whatever. And he wants to know whether he can get to the festival campsite with all his whatever he needs for the weekend before the festival starts. Um, and I suppose what we're saying is we've got these four types of questions. So look at them one by one. Now, the existence question, remember, we had this existence idea would be, is it possible for Jones to get there on time? Is it that is a possible so, you know, a, a scenario where there is a, a way of him getting there on time. So I've said here, you know, sometimes we're just interested in whether or not there's at least one way of getting there. If there is, we've got a solution. Now, there might be multiple ways of getting there. I suspect there is. Uh, but if you find one, then you kind of know there's a solution. That's one way of proving that it, that it does exist. B, construction. Could we find a specific way of getting there? Now, if he's got a car, he could just be that he drives there. He might not have a car. He might have to get the train. He might have to get one train followed by a bus, followed by a taxi. And as long as there's a, uh, there's a route and a timeline that allows him to get there on time, sorted. Now, it might be a really ridiculous one. His mate's got a private jet and he flies there. Well, most of us haven't got that option. But you can see that would potentially be a solution to his problem if Jonah has got some very rich friends.
Um, enumeration. Now, this is where we would count up how many different ways there are. Now, it could be an infinite number of ways, all I know, because, you know, it's this bus or this train. You could walk, you know, but, well, there might be a finite way. It might only be one way, um, given these time constraints. So there are lots of times we need to know how many ways of doing something there are. And optimization would be what's his best option determined by. Is it the cheapest, the most convenient, as I say, the one that gets him there the quickest, maybe? Um, so all of that then, he's got the extra detail here, but you'll notice really what I'm interested in again is these four words. These four words, existence, construction, enumeration, and optimization. Now here's a question for us. Now again, it's relating to these four um, ideas. And so we have some coins in your pocket. And apparently we need to put 89p, perhaps it's a bar of chocolate or something that we want to buy from a vending machine. And we, we, we it's not one of the newfangled ones, which um, you have to present your card. You've got to put coins in. So here it says you want to use as few coins as possible to do this. And why might a solution not exist? Um, well, I suppose you, you might not know. Um, what, what num what coins you have you might not have the right you might not have 89p you might only have 20p so <laughs> straight away he's not going to buy that bar of chocolate um or it might be you've only got pound coins and again so you might not have the right coins but notice this really i'm not too fussed about this this is an existence question an existence question i'm not sure if i spelled that right um i'm going to go back and check it now is it with an e yes it is with an e so there that's an e always was an e um next question b why might it not be possible for you to construct a solution well if i suppose if you know what numbers he's got you could find a way of doing it because remember this is when you construct a solution it's you're you're assuming there is a solution now but just because he there is a solution doesn't mean he knows it so if he hasn't i mean this guy's looked in his pocket and thought oh, i haven't got very much but um he might not know what's in his pocket so in which case he doesn't know this is a problem of construction of course so even if he's got the right money he might not know he's got the right money and therefore might not be able to construct the solution until he looks in his pocket and then it's still different now, so um part c how many different solutions are there? now look, you can see straight away this is an enumeration question how many of them are there so in an enumeration question you're asked to find how many now look you could quite easily what do we want need 89p so you can have a 50p and you could have a 20p and you could have a 10p what's that that's 80. you could have a 5p and we've only got three one p so i'm gonna have i'm gonna say two p and it's obviously not the best way but you could have two lots of one p now i reckon that's 89 p now it's clearly not the best way but it is a solution and just listing all the different ways of doing it with those coins um now i reckon it'll probably tell me the answer in a bit but um i'm not too fast I, what i want you to realize here that this is an enumeration problem and the last one says find the optimal now the optimal solution is obviously an example of optimization it's finding the best one and an optimize optimization in this case would be the one with the fewest because it said use as few coins as possible so presumably it's exactly the same as this 50 a 20 and a 10 and a 5 but then i reckon two lots of 2p one two three four five six six coins so in this case i'll <laughs> it's quick and easy to do so i'll say six let's see what the solutions actually say six is right 20 apparently ways I'll, I'll leave it for you to list them all and i'll leave it to you to read those as well um so again these four words we keep on coming up to now i'm going to go through this and um, notation you need to know set notation in particular so i mean i've got the examples underneath but we often write a is an element of a bigger set so a is an element of the big set a um, or b or whatever um now very often we think of this as being belongs to which kind of means the same thing 
but in set notation we're saying that a is an element of the bigger set um, n of a is technically is the number of things inside it number of elements of a so if i have a set a it might be the number of prime numbers less than 100 um, n i don't know what number of prime numbers less than 100 there are but you know you could work it out and you could write it down now you've probably seen these this notation at GCSE uh, for probability. So this is A and B, and it's written down here, A and B. Now the posh name for that is the intersection of sets A and B. Whereas if we have the, well, the U shape rather than the N shape, you probably know that that is OR. So this is OR, and this one was AND. Um, and the OR one, says here a or b number of elements that are in either a or b or both is called the union it's a posh name and the final piece of set notation i want you to be aware of is a dash not a and again it's got a posh name complement but how many elements are not in set a so that's the set notation for you so let's just do a couple of examples and i've got the answers over here just to speed things up for us um, and it says positive inches is less than 10 that are also prime um, what's it say here the positive inches less than 10 are used to form two sets all right so we've got set a and set b and a is the these numbers less than 10 which are prime so these are the primes and we've got two three five seven and then we've got b which is two more than the prime Oh, I see. So two more than four is four. Two more than three. three. So we've, we've just added two. So this is, if you like, plus two onto them. And we've got our two sets, A and B. Um, so write these in set notation. And you can see what the way the set notation works over here. It's two, three, five, seven. But notice these curly brackets. These are usually written like that. Two, three, five, seven. And this curly bracket like this to get used to having to draw those in one way or another and b is four seven five nine because we've added two on okay represent the outcomes in the venn diagram you should be able to do that from gcse that shouldn't be a problem and then find the set of a and b now a and b notice me saying it straight away that n tells me it's and well, that's just five and seven there we go five and seven a and b is five and seven whereas a or b so if i do a or b now that's all of them inside there. So it's two, three, four, five, seven, nine. Two, three, four, five, seven, nine. Yeah, that works as well. And what find the number of things which are not in A. Well, it's four things in A, so presumably all the others aren't in A. Um, and it's one well, there's five of them. It goes it's one to nine, isn't it? Because the number's less than ten. Yeah, it makes sense. There's five things. So that's an example question. Um, using set notation. Um, I, I did want to sh also show you a couple of examples of how these appear in exam questions. Hussein wants to travel by train from Edinburgh to Southampton, leaving Edinburgh after 9 a.m., arriving by 4 p.m. He wants to leave Edinburgh as late as possible. Hussein rings the train company to find out about train times. Write down the question he might ask, which leads to an existence problem. Well, I suppose, is there a train that does the journey? An optimization problem would be, what's the best one he could catch to get there the quickest, perhaps? What did the answer say? Is this journey possible? Is it possible to travel from Edinburgh to Southampton at this time, getting there by this time? Is there a possible train for him to catch? And this could be anything. It, what's the latest time I could leave and still get there? It might be what's the quickest time. It might be what's the cheapest time. All of those would fit the optimization rule. And um, another exam question came up. Jamila needs to store 10 packages in boxes. She has a list showing the size of each package. The box is all the same size. And Jamila can use up to six of these boxes to store all the packages. Which of the following is a question that Jamila could ask, which leads to a construction problem? Justify your choice. In how many different ways can I fit the, the packages in a box? How can I fit the packages in boxes? And in my mind, as soon as I see in how many different ways, I'm thinking, oh, that's an enumeration one. So this one has got to be the uh, construction question. How can I do it? Can I construct a solution? And what did the answer say here? How can I fit the part packages in the box was right? And there's the answer that they've talked about. Now, look, that is a brief description of these four types of problems. 
We had the existence, we had construction, we had enumeration, and we had optimization. A bit of set theory thrown in. So thanks a lot.